Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. I thought since it was a new year I could start kind of a new series on my channel. So I'm going to start what I'm going to call Tutorial Tuesday. And it's not where I show you guys a tutorial because I don't feel like I'm that type of makeup channel or that I'm good enough at makeup to like do tutorials and to like lecture you guys on how to properly apply your makeup. However, because I am, I like to think, a student of makeup, and I assume most of us are on YouTube as well, we could like do a tutorial together. So we go on YouTube, we find a tutorial, we follow along, and hopefully we figure it out. We learn a ton about makeup, and we try a bunch of different creator content. So if you have any suggestions, or you have a favorite guru that you want me to check out, do leave a comment down below, and we can try a million different looks and totally level up our makeup applying abilities. So the first one I thought we could do together is a vintage 1960s makeup tutorial film. And this is from the channel Glamour Days. It's a super popular video. It's got like 2.2 million views. And basically it's like, I think a max factor film of how to apply your makeup. It seems just like for normal women, normal teenagers, and um, the lady just has her bathrobe on and a hairband, which I thought was super cute. I would suggest you turn it on and follow along with me. Let's try doing some 1960s makeup. So when you first turn the film on, there's a lot of face touching and like, oh, let's accentuate our beauty and not apply too much makeup or we will look ridiculous. The first thing they jump right into is applying a foundation and it looks like she applies a liquid foundation. And they're like, here's the foundation, let's get it on our fingers. And then she just starts applying it to her face. So there's no mention of how much we should be using. We're spreading it out with our fingers. And interestingly enough, we're using an upward motion. I'm just gonna take one pump of my Revlon Color Stay for combo skin. And I feel like, I'm just gonna like warm it up between my fingers. And okay. Doing that pressing motion and then slightly lifting up to the hairline. Now one thing I've, um, I guess, kind of learned when you're watching other YouTube videos is you tend to not want to lift the foundation up on your hairy areas, so your mustache and beard area. Um, so it's interesting, they don't mention make mention of going down, it's always lift up. So I'm just going to try that today. And we'll see if it accentuates anything bad. And then they just say to blend it very evenly. Next they say to blot off the excess foundation just with a tissue. So that is what I'm going to do. They don't really say how much you should blot off or like how to blot off. And everything is like super gentle and elegant. Next, they move right along into concealing your under eye circles, just using another liquid foundation that looks like, and just patting it under your eyes. I'm gonna be using this Instant Age Rewind from Maybelline, and she puts it on with her fingers, but I'm just going to cheat here and put it on with the sponge and then blend in with my fingers. It's definitely, definitely should be noted that if you do have under eye circles, they blame it on lack of sleep or lack of iron. So either way, you're definitely doing something wrong if you have dark under eye circles. Moving on to blush, it looks like she's using kind of a light pink salmon color. It almost looks like her skin tone. So I don't think I have anything quite that light and bright, but maybe the closest I have is one of these two colors. This is just from my Coastal Sense um, 10 color blush palette. So I think I'm gonna go for this. And they're like, it just should be a nice quiet glow on your cheeks and it shouldn't come closer than the center of your eye. So back here is okay for blush. Anything in front here is like a nose, no-go zone. So I'm just gonna pick up a little and just give my cheeks a quiet glow. I feel like these really light colors don't really do anything for me. Like, they're so subtle or I'm so pale. They also go on to contour. However, she recommends that you use a blush color that is like maybe three skin, three tones darker than your skin tone. So Lord knows what that means. Um, I feel like none of these are super dark. I do have this NARS brush blush that might be close. I can't remember what this one's called, 
but I got it with my VIB Rouge like welcome kit so I could go look it up and put the info down here. It is a shimmery color so I don't know. There's no mention of like what texture your blushes should be or anything and the brush that she uses is kind of like if you bought a makeup set it comes with that kind of like long cheap really synthetic looking bristles but um, she's just literally pointing up her cheekbones kind of going down and hmm that seems all right she's really like getting it down in there as well and you're supposed to point up your cheekbone and she does also use a tiny bit on her jawline as well but lord knows girl doesn't need to her cheekbones and her jawline are popping there's no mention of making sure any of that is really well blended in, so for now I'm going to leave it, but maybe when I leave the house I will give it a better blend. Next they go on to powdering, and they say to use a loose powder and a powder puff, a really soft fluffy one. And I usually just use the round cotton pants that are quite dense, but I did go out and find some Quo Luxury Cotton Facial Pads, which are really soft and fluffy, that might be two there. Um, and they're really good for like removing eye makeup. They're a lot softer. There's no texture So I feel like it's a lot less um, Irritating on your eyes and because it is so big and fluffy. That's what I'm going to use for my powder puff today So they say to use a lot of powder and that this is going to help set everything and blend everything and so use a liberal amount of powder because we're gonna cook the face. The next instruction is to let that set. No mention of how long it takes to set or what setting actually means. So I still have no idea. Like how do you know when your face is baked? I think a lot of people just wait till after they're done their eye makeup, but um, no tips here from this video. So then they just say to take another powder puff and just gently take off the excess. A lot of putting stuff on and taking stuff off and I feel like if you have dry skin, this is going to just kind of flake you up a little bit. And I think that's it for base. I think right now we're going to be moving on to our brows. Using a brow pencil, they recommend it is as close to your eyebrow, your hair color as possible. And don't use black unless you have really black hair. Their tips for shaping your brow are pretty basic nowadays. So um, obviously the high point when you're filling in the first half of your brow, the highest point should be where the going through your eye to the nostril should be the high point and it should be a straight line up to that point. And then to finish your eyebrow off, this sh just slightly extended past the outside corner of your eye should be where your tail comes down. So according to that, I could probably go a little bit longer. I feel like every magazine tutorial, every like YouTube YouTuber has a basic tutorial like this. These have just kind of become like the eyebrow rules of like all time. Then they do mention you should go in and blend with a, well they call it a mascara wand, but I think more often today we just have spoolies, sometimes attached to your pencil like in the Benefit case. And if you're wondering, this is the Benefit Goof Proof Brow Pencil in 6, and I really like this one. Now at that point they say if you are a young girl or a teen, stop right there, put some mascara on and your eye makeup is complete. But if you are an adult or you're a little extra vampy, then we're going to move on to eyeshadow. And to start with, she uses a pale white-ish lid color. I just have this adorable Jessica Lib Liebskind Vintage eyeshadow palette, which has vanilla and espresso in it. I got this in one of my Ipsy bags, and I haven't really got too much of a chance to use it. But in this 1960s tutorial, they only use a brown color and a white color, so I thought this was perfect. It says vintage. It looks vintage. So I'm going to start... She just uses a cream shadow, what looks to be a cream shadow on her eyes, so I'm just going to plop this on with my finger. Then it looks like she goes in with just a tiny fluffy brush and uses the brown shade to contour just above the lid.
there's really no mention of blending them in or anything. You just kind of like place them and then go with it. And it actually looks kind of severe in her video, like how unblended it looks. Next, she recommends using like a pearly shadow under your brow bone, but I'm just gonna keep it simple and use the same, I think it's kind of like a matte shadow and highlight my brow bone there. No mention of any like product names or anything in these videos. Um, I don't know if that's because assume, they assume they're all Max Factor products or what, but not even like the line or type of the product, anything. It's just like, here's my brow pencil, here's what I'm gonna do. Next, they move on to eyeliner and they recommend, unless you have very black hair, don't use a black eyeliner as it's just too harsh. So I'm gonna use a brown here. It's a very dark brown, but whatever. And she does use a liquid. And again, it's a really interesting jar that she pulls out to apply it with. And she just applies it with a brush, which is actually pretty similar to what the Kat Von D tattoo liner has. And this is in Mad Max Brown. And they just recommend going as close to the eye line as possible. No mention of flicking out or how thick that line should be, just as close to the lash line as possible. And then they finally apply a coat of mascara. And they also give you a little extra lecture in there, like if your eyes look kind of dead, it's probably because you've been abusing your body and not taking care of yourself. So make sure you get sleep, make sure you eat the right things. I don't know if that's a little bit of like physiognomy or what, but... They do apply mascara to the top and bottom lashes, so that's what I'm going to do. And they do recommend you go in and separate after with a brush, so again, that is what I'm going to do. Next, they move right along to lipsticks, and it looks like she takes a powder puff. I'm just going to tear mine in half so I'm not wasting so much of them. Um, she just dips it in her powder and blots her lips quickly. And then they do recommend over 14's okay to wear um, lipstick, under 14's not. And they recommend to choose a subtle color and they choose the color very similar to this beautiful uh, Besame red color. And actually if you go to Glamour Days' website, I think they're sponsored by Besame, which is really cool. If you don't know, Besame does have a bunch of retro themed beauty products, lipsticks, brushes and things. Um, and you can check out, I did a review of this Besame Red lipstick in a different video. But um, yeah, they say choose a subtle color. Oops. Maybe I was a little scandalized when they pulled out this beautiful color. But this is totally my color, so let's go with it. All right, so they recommend you stick your arms on the table and you pick up some uh, lip product. Sort of like steady everything so you're nice and smooth. And I'm going to try to do this in my little mirror here. I'm gonna work from the inside out. Then you can fill in the rest just with the bullet. And then of course we're gonna blot with the tissue. And of course they recommend if you're not up for a lipstick, just go with a lip gloss and it'll kind of be a softer look. After that, they talk about blemishes and they just kindly let you know that blemishes are really normal in most young girls and that it's kind of unavoidable, so you can just use makeup to cover it up. She uses kind of a lipstick tube type um, concealer. I'm just gonna go with this NYX Wonder Pencil. And again, a little bit more of a lecture. If, you're, if you eat well and if you are clean, you probably won't get acne, so. And with that application of blemish coverage, we are completely done this 1960s retro makeup look We're using the footage from Glamour Days. She pulls off her headband and does a bit of a hair flip. I'm a little less elegant. But yeah, what do you guys think of this final look and have you tried this tutorial out and what did you think? I feel like my skin is really nice and soft, but it kind of is a little bit powdery too. Um, I would love to go over it with some finishing spray just to kind of take that down. But I might just rock it like this. I feel like because the colors of blush and contour were so subtle, it doesn't really matter if we did a terrible job of blending. Same with the eyes too. Like, because it's so simple, if it's a little harsh, it's just going to like kind of fade and look nicer throughout the day. 
So overall, I really had a fun time trying this tutorial. I've been meaning to do this for such a long time and I do like the way the look turned out. If you just add a bit more of a wing, it's kind of my everyday normal kind of a look with just a couple different application methods. So I really suggest you give this tutorial a go and let me know what you think. And of course, I will see you all tomorrow in tomorrow's beauty video. Bye guys.